One comment I often hear from my students is, I don't have enough money to invest, so I'm going to have to wait and save up, you know, thousands of dollars before I can start investing. But uh, while that used to be true, it is no longer true because we have these things called exchange traded funds that have been around for about 20 years. And you can buy one share at a time if that's what you can afford. I mean, or of course you could buy tens of thousands of shares at one time, but that'd be a lot more expensive. And normally you buy these through, uh, you have to open a, a brokerage account and then you'd buy them through that and you'd have to pay a commission. But <clears throat> of late, uh, actually for, for years now, specific uh, investment management companies like Vanguard have been developing their own exchange traded funds which I'll just call ETFs now and if you buy those e the ETFs that they manage directly through them you can buy them without any sort of commission and you don't even need a brokerage account so I was going to demonstrate uh, using the Vanguard group which has I guess maybe a dozen or so ETFs, how you could generate a nicely diversified portfolio for under $500 and you don't even have to do all 500 at once. So the ETFs that I have chosen are ETFs that uh, I invest in some of these myself. They are going to give you an extremely diversified portfolio across the United States and foreign markets. And I've, I've chosen four, and I'm going to just highlight uh, two of them. These two, oops, let's see, these two, own mostly stock in bigger companies. So companies like Apple or Microsoft or, or Nestle. This one owns only companies that operate out of the U.S. I mean, they do international, they do sell internationally, but the companies themselves are based in the United States. So that would be the Apples and the Microsofts. And then this owns companies that are all based outside of the U.S., when, although, of course, they would do business to some degree in the U.S. The companies, again, are headquartered outside of the U.S. So um, like Nestle, for instance, I believe is, is in this group. So if you bought a share of VTI, that particular ETF owns shares of stocks in 3,613 corporations that are based out of the United States. And if you bought VEU, that particular ETF owns shares in a little over 2,500 companies. And it owns hundreds of thousands of shares of those companies. But if you bought these two ETFs, you'd have ownership or indirect ownership in a little over 6,000 different companies. So it's going to be a nicely, I mean, and, the, and those companies are all over the world. So it's going to be a really nicely diversified portfolio. The price as of Friday, November the 10th for the U.S. total stock market one was $111. And for the non-U.S. one was $44 about. So you could purchase one share in each of those for only about $155. Now, and that would be great, actually. <clears throat> but if you wanted to add a little more risk to your portfolio with the potential for a decent amount of extra return, you could also, and note that I said also, not just buy st uh, small caps, but um, you could add these two to your portfolio to have a total of four ETFs in it. The small cap stocks typically, they're basically um, shares of stock in companies that are smaller, companies that you've probably never heard of, so like Globalscape or Perfect World. Those are not um, companies that most people know of. They're smaller companies, they, they're riskier, but they tend to generate higher returns. And so these two indexes don't have many, if any, um, small caps in them. So I like to have a little more risk in my portfolio, or I think younger people, if they're saving money for an extended period of time, 
it's it's good to have a little more risk not a ton more risk um, so maybe I'd buy like if you know eventually get my portfolio to have quite a few shares of these two uh, larger cap indexes and just a few shares of those two the smaller cap ones because they're riskier and this uh, invests only in U.S. small caps. This one invests only in non-U.S. small caps. It said all world, but what it really is is it invests in small cap stocks across the world except for the United States. And then this would include the United States ones. And that would, again, would, would just get you diversified across small caps across the world. And so buying all four of these is going to give you an incredibly well-diversified portfolio. You'd be invested in over 11,000 different companies, and it would cost you $371 as of Friday, November the 11th or 10th. Um, these prices change constantly, so <clears throat> the price is no longer this amount because this was after the stock market closed last Friday. Uh, today, they're different prices, but they don't usually vary by an extreme amount in any given day. But still, for less than $400, you could be invested very nicely across all markets. And what I'd probably do if you only had $112-ish is buy this one first. So I'll just rank them. I'd buy this one second. And actually, I would buy them in the order that I have listed. So if you have $112 12-ish dollars this month, buy that one. Next month, buy this one. The month after, buy that one. The month after, buy that one, if you're only saving in really small increments. And then after that, I'd probably buy this one again, and then this one, and maybe the couple months later, this one, and then this one. And, you know, buy this one a few times, buy these two a few times before you start adding more of these into your portfolio, just because they're so incredibly risky. And remember, these prices are going to fluctuate. Some months they'll be up, some months they'll be down. But over the long run, all of them should probably go up. And by long run, I mean decade, a decade. So if you're saving money for retirement, which is a great idea to, to do when you're young because you have so many years working on your side, um, then you're not going to need this money for three or four or five decades maybe. Five is probably pushing it. Um, so they in all likelihood will rise, 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 rise over time and with, with some drops along the way, but you'll end up ahead. And let me just show you, if you invested $1,000 and you could earn, let's say, 9% on that, and you invested it for 50, 40 years, how much you would have, just to show you how time is on your side. So investing $1,000 for 40 years and earning 9% on it, that would turn into $31,000. So it is worth it to save small amounts of money, even though you might think it's not. If you have 40 years of time working on your side and you can earn decent returns, then it's going to grow to be a lot. And if you save $1,000 a year, that's going to really help. Now these these uh, four funds, they're all developed by a company named Vanguard. And they have, all have fees, but they're incredibly low fees. Vanguard is known for having the lowest fees um, for all mutual funds and possibly ETFs. I'm not sure about the ETFs. I just know I've checked the fees on these ETFs and they're very low. So to open an account with Vanguard, you could just go to Vanguard.com and um, you would want to click on this personal investors link and then open an account online, get started today. and open a new account and I'm gonna I'm gonna say no although I do have an account with uh, Vanguard I can, I'm not gonna go all the way through this because I don't actually want to open an account with Vanguard since I already have one but you're going uh, the main thing you're gonna have to probably look up if you don't know it 
is your social security number, um, your bank routing number, because you have to, or you can, I don't know if you have to, <laughs> goodness, um, let's see, uh, mark a <laughs> bank account with your Vanguard account so you can easily transfer money from from hopefully your bank account to Vanguard not the other way around and you'll need to know your bank routing number which you can probably find online or just call your bank uh, if it's not on your checks and the process is pretty easy so I'm gonna actually just uh, not hit continue because I don't want to continue this process but when it's time to buy ETFs it's a pretty easy process once you actually have your Vanguard account open up and I'll do another video where I show how to actually purchase them and I'll actually buy one just to show you how easy it is